Hey, breakout students, this is going to be the last day of our logs unit. And if you take a look at page 20 in your packet, you'll see some notes that we're going to fill in together today. So today we're going to be talking about exponential and log applications and how we can use logs to solve some of our former exponential applications that we've already looked at. For example, how long will it take $1,000 as an investment in an annual interest rate of 6% compounded continuously? That's the keyword there. To so triple. We've done this a question already. We've done something very similar, at least in the last unit on exponentials. So this is an example of an exponential application, but today we're going to use logs to solve it. So the only difference between what we used to do and what we're now going to do is we now have the algebraic skills to solve for that variable up in the exponent. So we know we should be using the PERT formula, right? Because when it's compounded continuously, got to be PERT if we're talking about financial applications. So we know that the initial investment's 1,000, so capital P is 1,000. We know that the annual interest rate is 6%, so it's E to the 0 0.06. But we want to know how long will it take, so that's T, for the account to triple. So triple would be that the end amount is $3,000. And as soon as we fill in all those blanks, if this was unit 6, we would have done Y1, Y2, calculate the intersection. Is there anything wrong with that? Not necessarily. But in this unit, the expectation is now that we have some good knowledge of logs and their properties, we can use logs to solve this for that exponent algebraically. So to do this, the first thing you have to do is isolate the base of E, so divide both sides by 1,000. So we're going to wind up getting that 3 equals E to the 0 0.06T. So that was kind of a quick step to isolate the base. Once you've isolated the base, now think about how do we solve when we have e to a power? Well, the inverse of the base e is going to be the natural log ln. So I'm going to take the ln of both sides, just like we do if we're finding inverses and things of that nature. So the ln of 3 equals the ln of e to the 0 0.06t. Leave this side as ln of 3 for a moment. ln of e to the 0 0.06t is just 0 0.06t. Okay, ln and e, they're inverse functions. They undo one another. So you're left with that exponent of 0 0.06t. Divide both sides by 0 0.06 to get that the time is the ln of 3 over 0 0.06. However, that's not going to mean a lot to you if you walk into the bank and they say, yeah, to triple your investment, it's going to take ln of 3 over 0 0.06 years. Congratulations. No, I mean, let's round to, let's say, the hundredths place just to bring some context to what this, this value actually is. ln of 3 divided by 0 0.06 is 18. 0.31 years is how long it will take to triple our investment. So for questions of this form, although sometimes we like leaving answers in an exact form, exact would be leave the natural log in it. For questions in how much time it takes, it would make no sense to leave the answer like this. I will give you directions as to where you need to round. So 18.31 years is the correct answer. All right, moving on to number two, what we're transitioning to look at now in the next few examples are equations that are modeled with functions that have logs in them already. So there's two kind of classic examples we're going to look at, one of them being the intensity of a sound, which you might be familiar with, is known as a decibel rating that the sound gets. So the loudness of sounds is measured in decibels. To measure decibels, we assign an intensity of I sub zero to a very faint sound called the threshold of sound. So we're going to compare all other sound intensities to this I sub zero, which is a sound that you can just sort of barely hear. If a particular sound has an intensity capital I, then the decibel rating of the louder sound can be modeled using this log equation. The decibel rating is 10 times log to the I divided by I sub zero. So we divide the intensity of the sound divided by I sub zero, which is that intensity that's kind of just barely audible to us. So in part A of this question, a telephone dial tone reaches an intensity level of 10 to the 8.0 power, I sub zero. Find the decibel rating. So to find the decibel rating, if this is the intensity, this is capital I right here. This is going to go in for capital I. And notice how when I plug that in, we're going to have an I sub zero on the top and that I sub zero on the bottom, which is good news. So it's going to be 10 log of... 10 to the 8.0 I sub zero 
over I sub zero. And in fact, all, all these decibel rating questions, the intensity that you're given will be given in terms of I sub zero, okay? So if we cross out those I sub zeros, we'll wind up getting that the decibel rating is 10 log of 10 to the 8.0 power, or just 10 to the eighth if you wanna write it that way. What is log of 10 to the eighth? Well, remember that we're dealing with log base 10 right now. So if this is log base 10, log of 10 to the eighth is really just eight, isn't it? When the base of the log and the base of the exponential match, the, the answer is just that exponent. So the decibel rating that this telephone dial tone would get is 80. And the sad thing is, is we may not even know what a telephone dial tone sounds like anymore. Reason being, I feel like when you pick up your cell phone to make a call, you don't get a dial tone, right? Unless you have a landline at home, this might be not something that is somewhat outdated at this point. But we can still go to rock concert. So a rock concert is a decibel rating of 115. How many times more intense is a rock concert as compared to the telephone dial tone? So what we know is that the decibel rating is 115. If I wanna compare intensities, how many more times intense is it? We have to kind of convert this over to a, a level of intensity, which we can find algebraically. But let's look at the last case. Here, this corresponded with an intensity that was 10 to the 8.0 I sub zero. So 10 to the eighth gave me a decibel rating of 80. So can we translate that to an intensity level for the decibel level of 115? Hopefully it makes sense that if, if 10 to the eighth corresponded with 80, then we could do 10 to the 11.5 I sub zero. And that would be the intensity of sound for a decibel rating of 115. And you can go through the process and you know plug this in for capital I and do the I sub zeros cross out. You're gonna wind up getting 115 there, okay? So if that's the intensity, I wanna compare that to the intensity of that telephone dial tone. So if I divide these 10 to the 11.5 I sub zero over 10 to the 8.0 I sub zero, how many more times intense is this than that? Well, the I sub zeros cancel. And when you divide two things with the same base, we keep that base and then subtract the exponents. So 11.5 minus eight would be 3.5 is the new exponent. So the rock concert is 10 to the 3.5 times more intense, which let's just bring some context to what that means. 10 to the 3.5 is 3,162 times more intense. So if you can picture what that telephone dial tone sounds like, apparently if you're at a rock concert, the sound intensity is that many more times intense as compared to that of the telephone dial tone. So you can see how increasing that decibel rating, I mean, from 80 to 150, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be 3,000 more times intense, but because in order for a log function to grow that much from 80 to 115 as the decibel rating, you have to increase the intensity by that much. Log growth is really slow. You think about what log functions look like. Do you see the path I'm tracing with my pen? That's what a log function looks like. So in order to get to that level of intensity, that many times difference, you'll see that, yeah, the decibel ratings aren't actually all that different. And you'll see something very similar in the next example. So. Last example we're gonna to do together today is talking about Richter scale values. So if you're familiar with the Richter scale at all, the Richter scale is what we use to measure the magnitude of an earthquake. So here's the formula that is used to calculate a Richter scale value that an earthquake gets. So R is the Richter scale. And then the value of capital E in this case is the energy that's emitted by the earthquake in kilowatt hours. And that's a little bit tough even for me to describe what that means to you, but we're just gonna go with it for now and know that E is energy in kilowatt hours. How much energy was released by an earthquake measuring 5.8 on the Richter scale? So we have 5.8 is capital R. We wanna find capital E, the energy there. So 5.8 is capital R. That would be 0 0.67 log of 0 0.37 E plus 1.46. So we wanna start solving 
selling this for capital E. In order to sell for capital E, we want to start isolating the log, get the log alone. So I'm going to subtract 1.46 to the other side. And this is going to be a question that you're going to keep a lot of decimals on your calculator here. We're not going to round until the very end. All right, 5.8 minus the 1.46 is 4.34 on the other side. 4.34 equals 0 0.67 log of 0.37e. All right, next thing I'm going to divide both sides by 0.67, right? Get rid of that next to the log. So if I do 4.34, keep that number, hit divide by 0.67. We get this not so nice looking number, 6.477 dot, dot, dot. I'm okay, by the way, if you write dot, 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 I don't want to write out that whole decimal, but I know it does go on longer than that. Log of 0.37e. Okay, we're now at a stage where we have to convert this to exponential form. Once you get the log alone, to solve for e, you're going to convert this to an exponential form. So there's a couple different ways you can write this. We've done it in a few ways, but some of you are familiar with doing this process of exponentiating, whatever the base of the log is, which is base 10. You can do 10 to this side and 10 raised to that side. And 10 to the log base 10 would just be 0.37e then. So 0.37e would equal 10 raised to the 6.477 dot, dot, dot. Okay. And then eventually I'm going to do 0.37 and divide that to the other side. Okay. So if I do 10 raised to this answer right here, that's this number. Divided by 0.37 is, here's the energy right here that's emitted in kilowatt hours. And even if we don't understand exactly what that number means, it just sounds like a lot. It's 8,117,274-ish. So the nearest, you know, we'll do kilowatt hours, KWH. Okay. That sounds like a lot of energy to me. Now, my favorite part of this question is actually part B. Part B says, what is the Richter scale measure of an earthquake that's twice as powerful? So I want to know, okay, the Richter scale got a 5.8 when the energy was this many million kilowatt hours. If I double the energy that's that's outputted there, okay? So let's actually do that. Don't, I hope you didn't delete that number. Not a big deal if you did. But if I double that, to 16,234,548-ish kilowatt hours, how does that change the Richter scale value? And it seems like it's gonna go up by a lot. So the Richter scale would be 0.67 times log of 0.37 times E. So for E, I'm just gonna write that it's two times our last answer, where our answer here was the 8 million, just to kind of save myself some space. Don't forget about plus 1.446. Okay. So as far as using that last answer, let's make sure we type that in carefully here. So it's going to be 0 0.67 times the log of 0 0.37 times this answer, right? I already doubled that energy amount. So I'm going to do 0 0.37 times that, close parentheses twice, and then plus, don't forget about plus 1.46 at the end. And when I do that, we get that the Richter scale rating for something that's twice as powerful is only a 6.0. And it's, again, because of the nature of how log growth works. It's very slow. So if you double the amount of energy, which would be an X value, the Y value, that Richter scale, only changes by 0 0.2. That's the change by doubling the input for X from 8 million to 16 million. That's pretty wild. But you can imagine that if there was a news report saying, hey, there was a 5.8 earthquake today. This is how much energy was released. And then they come back and they said, you know what? Actually, we reported that wrong. It was actually a 6.0. To the general public, that doesn't sound like too big of a deal. I'm like, oh, 5.8 to 6.0, that's not too bad. But when it's a 6.0, double the amount of energy was released by the earthquake. And you can imagine that there's probably much more damage associated with a 6.0 than as compared to a 5.8. So I really just think that's fascinating because I th think we think about doubling this number that this is going to get huge. But think about what the Richter scale ratings are. What's the max 10 that we can get to? So it's going to account for, you know, some pretty large releases of energy there. All right. So like I said, this is the last one I'm going to do with you today because the last 
last two questions are ones that you should be able to do at this point. So here's a practice about investing money compounding continuously. Look back at number one for that. And then here's an example where I gave you the population of a city. I already gave you the formula though. And then figuring out some um, questions that relate to the population, solving these algebraically. I would say, see if you can do these on your own. So practice, try these. So that this way, next time I see you, we'll go over them real quick and then start our process of reviewing for a log test. So hopefully you enjoyed some of these log and exponential applications today. Have a great rest of your day.